you know, I, I think we'll limp along. I think we'll be able to keep the lights on, um, but how long it, we are in that phase and then how long recovery is and how long does it take to, for us to get back to where we were, that's a, that's a big TBD. Welcome back, everybody. Rich Brubaker, Behind the Grind with... Right, Sam. How you doing, everybody? Welcome back. And this week, we have a special guest. Good to be with you guys. I'm Jeff. I'm Rachel. This week, we're really trying to focus on kind of the behind the scenes of what entrepreneurs are experiencing through this time. And then we're going to talk today really about the supply chain challenges, opportunities, lessons that they've had over the last three months now. Uh, I think... All of us were in the city of Shanghai when this all started to happen, and all of us left at different times, thinking we'd be able to be back by now. Uh, but clearly things have changed, and that's not just for us personally, but also for the business. So I think it's going to be a great episode. It's always a great conversation when it's myself and Brian, myself and Jeff and Rachel, and now we're all together. This is going to be really a lot of fun. So with that, uh, Jeff, Rachel, uh, please, a quick introduction. Okay, we're freestyling here. So uh, good to be with you guys. Uh, both Rachel and I uh, founded and own a company called Bamboo, as Rich said. That's B-A-M-B-U. We're uh, Americans based and uh, splitting our time between China and America. Ironically enough, we started our business in 2003, the same year that SARS was upon us. So uh, we've been You're down right. this road before, I, I, I hate to say. And we uh, design and make uh, products made from renewable and organic resources, all sourced from China. And uh, a whole range of goods for the kitchen, for the home, for entertaining. What has the last three months been like? What was the initial impact? Was it, you know, it was Chinese New Year, you guys were already headed back, but what has been the impact of the business kind of in the short run and what were some of the things that really hit your windshield as it were, um, like over, over the course of the first month or two? Well, um, I was in, in, in preparation for this, I was sort of um, thinking back uh, over the last couple months and thinking, well, how long has it been and when did we start to sort of become aware of this? And I think for us it was, um, Mid-January, uh, we were back in the States and we were starting to hear um, the news and read the news and, and start to touch base and, um, and for us, you know, so it's been uh, almost three months um, of taking it in on a, on a daily basis and um, I guess one word, stressful, it's been stressful. Um, we've been in the fight and flight mode for some time um, and doing our best to, um, to, to find ways that we can de-stress and so we're doing a lot of hiking and uh, uh, commuting in nature and, and that seems to help. And just to paint the picture, all of our production is in, in China. We've got a separate business with separate staff in China overlooking uh, product development and production for us. So yes, it was very much in January around Lunar New Year time when this hit us first. And so now we're coming around and we're getting hit again. So uh, we, we're getting it from both sides, but we're holding our own, we're limping along. Um, we're in very close contact almost on a daily basis with our Shanghai based team. Um, and our business is a little bit uniquely structured, whereas we put a lot of emphasis on the production side, uh, really based in China, where we've been living for over a decade up until recently. So. And so what were some of the first things that you saw? Was it your factories calling you? Was it your customers calling you? Was it like, what, what was going on behind the scenes of this as you guys recognized what was happening? What was actually going on? Well, I guess, uh, you know, there in, in hindsight, there were, there were things that were working in our advantage and things that, that were not. And I think the fact that Lunar New Year um, was a part of this, um, we already had planned and we knew that um, the factories would be out from, you know, for yeah. several weeks, 
we knew the team was you know was was on holiday so we had we had that kind of time but um, you know the question that everybody was um, asking themselves at that time when this virus was in China was when is it when when can we go back to work and China lifted that pretty quickly um, I think they gave an extra week um, or so for um, returning and uh, then it, you know it was back to, to work and one of the other things that really um, was in our favor was the fact that the, our workforce um, is local and so we weren't depending on migrant labor uh, these folks were local. Our, our producer groups are, are fairly small. They're less than 30 people. So they were all coming from the community. And so, you know, when you're looking at your supply chain, having local, local workers is such a, it, it's, mm. it, it's a real advantage. So what's the, did your factory shut down? How, how long were they shut down? And when it started to happen, were you, what were you doing to try and kind of like, figure out what is the situation and what do you need to get done so you get your products out of China? Well, funny enough, you know, we were, as, as, as with any new year, we were, we were, uh, we, this was going to be our year. Um, you know, uh, 219 was good to us and, um, we, we really, we, we were really, primed for two, for 2020 we were, and, and year of the rat made it all, all that more, um, <laughs> possible. So, um, when, when it was time for, you know, for the factories to kind of get back to work, they were very eager to work. Um, we didn't get any kind of pushback. Everybody wanted to work. For us, um, we had some delays in raw material, which is essentially just our, our bamboo supply. Um, counties were still um, blocked off, so roadways. Um, were, were not always easy. So even if you're bringing raw material, let's say bamboo from one um, county to another, maybe it's an hour drive, but it's still, there were blockades that, that slowed us down. Um, but I would say we were kind of down maybe one to three weeks, depending on, on the group. And so I, I considered ourselves incredibly lucky um, and in fact, we were saying we want more and, <laughs> you know, so it was, um, and the factories love to hear that, but yeah. it, there was, that was the feeling. And so that brings us um, to mid to late February. Um, and then, the, you know, and then things, you know, we were so focused on what was going on in China um, I, so I, production is now ready, but it's now good. we're contained now, now, now yeah. so, contend with a demand that dropped immediately. And in, in our situation, we're very close with our producer groups. We've been with them for a long time and it was really important that um, whatever the situation is, we were finding win-win solutions. And so when we started to see um, what was ahead, what potentially was ahead on the U.S. side. Um, we started to slow things down as quickly as we could, not stop. Um, our uh, factory owners um, told us uh, most of the, you know, the folks that they interact with, their orders were being canceled. And so I was pretty pleased at the fact that we were, we were just slowing them down and- Turning it down a little bit. Turning it down. And, and we were in daily contact. And I think one of the keys for us was constant daily contact and communication. And is that, was that with every supplier, with every distributor, or did you kind of triage uh, through this process? We've got, three producer groups really that that we're working with so um, it was pretty easy from a communication standpoint um, <laughs> some you know some you know everybody of course was very supportive and 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 the rhetoric was very positive of course hope you're all well and you know that kind of um, sentiment um, you know we had the range of hey 
whatever you need from us. Um, and then I, we had one group who just said, well, when do you think we'll get the next order? Um, so, you know, you get the range, you get the range. <laughs> yep. Fair enough. Um, so, I mean, you guys are seeing that China's coming back, uh, but now it's the U.S. side. So, you know, from one fire to another, um, how, how did you find managing that? And what, how, I don't know, disorienting was that in a way? Like just, you know, trying to get through just the triage of, the, of your supply chain as a starting point, then having to flip that over. Was that just like, oh, Jesus, here we go again? Or like, how, how, are, you, how are you getting through that time? It, it was like, here we go again. And, and folks in the United States were mostly just new to this virus we had already been in it for a month and a half two months and so um already pretty tired uh stressed but um you know we kind of knew what to do i think we, we you know we had orders on the books that we had planned out for several months in advance again as rachel said we were planning for a banner 2020 so we had forecasted accordingly once we started to see what was going on in this market, we got in touch with some of our key customers, we got in touch with other markets, and we monitored and managed this to a point to where we were dialing back our forecast, dialing back our orders, and trying to manage this the best way we can. Here in the US, we sell a fair bit to grocery stores. So as we all know, grocery stores are in operation. We're still taking orders from grocery stores, but the other side of our business is hospitality, which, you know, is blank. So we've had to adjust best we can. We've brought all of our teams into our discussion too and uh, kind of prepared everybody for what, what's to come. I think, uh, you know, the uncertainty is, you know, is a large degree of that. As entrepreneurs, particularly working in China, I think we're used to working with a fair bit of uncertainty, but this one really tops it. <laughs> yeah, and I think, you know, whether you're talking China or the US, um, and then also managing expectations on the China side, where, um, where they're sort of looking at us going, are you okay? Um, so, you know, I think with our people, we were, we, you, you need to, you wanna be transparent, and you wanna be open and honest about what's going on, without com completely freaking out in front of them and maintaining some kind of leadership. And so it's a real test of, you know, having to get it up to, for, you know, a, a not scaring people and, and wanting to- um, Be realistic. Be realistic, but also we're still working here, right? We're not, <laughs> the, we haven't closed our doors, the lights are still on. Um, how do we how do we become, be productive? How do we shift and be nimble and do what you need to do to you know gravitate towards a business that still seems to be um, uh, active, like on our grocery product um, and our B to our B to B product um, and our B to C. We have an online presence, so. Um, you know, really working to bolstering what we can do in those um, platforms. So, I, can I jump in here? I'm wondering, like, how do you, what's your forecast then? Uh, how are you looking at the future and, and how is it really, besides the dialing down, is there any other kind of adjustments that you're um, making to, to react to that expected future that you have? Um, yeah, I'd say we are pretty. Well, we, we've certainly have curtailed uh, certain expenses that we had planned for. I mean, a lot of what the focus is is preserving cash. Because we've got, you know, we've got a fair bit in inventory, but that's just sitting, sitting there, pretty quiet, pretty still right now. You know, we're very hopeful that, you know, this is a three month, painful three months, but that we'll see some upside uh, at the end of that. You know, that rem remains to be seen. Um, uh, we've reduced staff hours um, across across the offices the best we can. Uh, we've put certain projects on hold and we've gone the extra mile to reach out to, and, and again, be in contact and communication with our key customers. And I think, you know, I think that's a testament to 
our relationships in, in China, our supplier relationships, where, as Rachel said, we've been working with some of the same groups for over, for close to 15 years. We are, are sort of, the way we work is very transparent. We communicate a lot. Some would say we over communicate. We share a lot about our situation. And I think in, you know, I think that's kind of, that's paid off in a situation like this. So actually, you, you mentioned that you're cutting back hours and things like, are you, are you cutting their salary back kind of as well? Or are you trying to offer up other ways for them to, to keep that salary? Like I know that everyone's really focused on maintaining what they can, but also maintaining cash flow. Like there's this, this push and pull because you have these relationships that go on, you know, years, if not decades. Um, and it's really hard to make those decisions. So when you're looking at this, what are some of the considerations? Are you thinking like, on a three month window, a six month, oh my God, it's this year and then backing it up. Like what's the easiest way for you to make those kind of, kind of difficult decisions? Well, I, I think what helps is um, we, we can look to China, we can look to Korea, we can look to other countries that have gone through this and we can see, um, you know, everybody has a different uh, approach to containment, but ultimately, this virus peaks, um, you get into recovery, um, uh, governments uh, roll, uh, roll out, Stimulus you know, some, you know so in some cases, um, but y y we have some history, we, ha we see how this thing moves and so we, you have that um, experience to, to work with and so as Jeff said, probably, you know, three, three months but I think that there's all also um, it it's 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 not it's not as easy as just sort of putting a line in the sand. It's is you know I I think we'll limp along. I think we'll be able to keep the lights on. Um, but how long it, we are in that phase, and then how long recovery is, and how long does it take to, for us to get back to where we were? That's a, that's a big TBD because it hinges on so many factors. Um, and in the case in the United States, um, it's, it's a dominoes effect. So if we're not selling, we're not making. If we're selling, we're making. So it, it, it really depends on the recession. Yeah, so as, you, as we've kind of gone through this, has your uh, back to work date gotten a little bit longer and longer? Like the first month, you're like, well, we're supposed to be here because it's Chinese New Year. And the second month, you're like, eh, it'll be gone in a week. You know, like, are you now going, shoo, this could be a year, this could be 18 months, or are you still pretty confident that like, say, end of summer, you know, we ha we're, we're getting there? Yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to think that. Um, and, and keep in mind, you know, in the beauty rich of having two companies <laughs> to, to keep afloat, um, you know, there's always work to be done. And so we've been doing, spending, you know, every morning we get up and we brush our teeth and we put on clothes and we go to work and we're put, you know, and- I know. <laughs> Jeff's better at it than I am. Uh, but we're, but, you know, but we show up and we're there and our folks have been doing the same and it really, it's really important to have that kind of discipline. Um, and I think now, because we've been doing this for as long as we have, um, and you know, we've had over the 20 years we've been at this, lots of pain points and challenges, you just get thicker skin and I will admit this, when, you know, there was a, a Friday afternoon and Jeff and I looked at each other and for about three seconds, I went, wow, we're, we're going down. We're going, you know, we're going down. And I will tell you, I will admit this, that those three seconds was pure bliss relief. And then- Because there's closure. Uh, <laughs> reality reality uh, kicked in and it was like, who's, who's gonna hire us? <laughs> I think that happens right before you drown. You have a feeling of, oh. Well, this. Yeah, but. I, we pull, I pulled her back. Uh, yeah, I, we back. came back and then it was like, oh shit, we've got to, we really have to make this work. So we, but we, you know, there's stuff to do and, and we're, we put together a digital catalog, um, you know, for, 
300 instead, bucks. instead of a printed one. Yeah. So that would be like different, different uh, tactics we might take. Um, Things that no, don't cost money. No reason to really be prospecting right now. You know, let's just lay low, take care of our current customers' needs if they have any. Um, so, because we we were also being solicited too, and that doesn't feel very good when you don't. You know, when you're trying to make your 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 ends meet and somebody's soliciting. So, we were careful not to. Um, come on strong. We let people know we were still operational. We were open for business and, and we let I have a question here is uh, You know, you said you've been doing this for 20 years or you've been in the game for 20 years I wonder how does this challenge compare to all the other challenges you kind of alluded it alluded to it already But I'm curious just uh, to hear this uh, specific question. How's it stack up in terms of um, You know the mother of all <laughs> Here. But, you know, like Rachel kind of alluded to, you first kind of, it feels like a, a, a punch to the gut, and you're kind of out of breath, but then when you, you know, get clear-headed, then I think, you know, a, a real entrepreneur then goes, okay, what do we need to do to navigate through this? And right. invariably, we do, yeah. and there may be a delay in, until we get to that kind of clear thinking, but... You know, I think we, we've found a way. Now, here's a silver lining. More people are cooking at home these days than previously. Well, everything we make is for cooking at home and making food. So that changes potentially, you know, our messaging, uh, where we reach people and when. So um, still too early to tell whether it's actually a silver lining, but there are opportunities in, in the trenches there. Uh, also, to answer your question, Brian, I, we've had, um, well, I, as Jeff mentioned, we started in SARS, and that, you know, when <laughs> when you take your nest egg and you start a company, and, 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 then, and then SARS happens, and all your product's coming from China. Um, and let me say that people are less informed then, and then the, the myth of, oh, I can get SARS from, from products, so we had to contend with that. So uh... yeah, but and and I think our, to our um, benefit, this is before social media, and um, so we, I think there was less noise out there. And one thing that is, um, and I don't, we're this is affecting everyone in the world, and there that's really profound. Um, it, it's hard to really. Think of some anything else that has um, that's happened at the same time to everyone in the in the world, True. and and there's there's some benefits to that, um, and that is you know we're we're all in this together, and and you hear that a lot, but it's so true, and and um, so it's <laughs> it's. It, there's some it, it nobody can can say okay well you're no longer a market for me so I'm gonna go I'm gonna go find another customer in Europe right. that's not it that's not enough. but the reality is that we're not all in this together I mean like you were saying you're you have some you have factories where they're having their customers which I'm gonna assume are I'm gonna assume are products similar to yours even maybe directly competitive that are not ordering but you guys are so Within your own I mean, is this now a time where if you can survive, you're going to come out ahead? You'd be, I mean, if not better an organization, better entrepreneurs for this time. And how do you look back on that as well? Because I, well. I, I kind of, I really think that, you know, this is, it, it is really tough. And it, you know, for your factories, it's going to be even tougher because they're going to be able to have you, but they're going to lose others. And that's going to put more pressure on you. So how, how do you kind of reflect or account for that, you know, balance that's happening right now? Well, on, on the factory side, um, they are 100% us. So um, I feel really we, we responsible. We carry that weight, yeah. We carry that weight as well. And that's why, one, we could work closely with them and say, all right, what does your capacity look like when you're just barely keeping things going? And right. so we could find that balance. Um, I think, um, and again, you know, Brian, I go back to your, your question on um, what, are, what have been the other challenging things over the years and anything to do with people 
humans, you know, um, they're, they're, they're such a joy and, and then, and then they're not. Um, and so you get the, you know, as you can imagine, you get the extreme with any relationship you have your good days and your bad and and um, I think some of the most challenging and where we're dealing with that these days as well is is the human factor and how people themselves individually are um, are adapting or not adapting I, ha I have a friend in China who, who's uh, barricaded himself He's, he and his Chinese family <clears throat> there, of four are, have not left their apartment yet um, they are they are fearful and so it really makes doing business with him um, you know difficult because I want to be sensitive to how he's feeling and where his head is but I'm also like hey let we gotta everything's gonna be okay let's move forward um, so I think the human element in all of this and just doing our best to just eke out any kind of kindness um, and you know any kind of goodwill that you can from yourself individually um, to make it work and I think that relationships um, and business have been um, sort of key factors for us and if there was a takeaway from all of this I would say um, if you're in business make sure you have really awesome relationships um, with with your customers with your producers um, because if you're an asshole or if they're an asshole, mm -hmm. then it's, you know, it's just not going to work out. And so, you know, you really have to make sure you're surrounded um, and you help cultivate great relationships. I like the quote, um, adversity doesn't build character, it reveals character. Yeah. So it's already the type of person you are, the type of business uh, principles you follow and uh, it really starts to show itself in times. Yeah, I was actually talking to a client, uh, they're a major retailer, and I was talking about how I realized they have not driven prices up on anything this entire time. And they're like, yeah, but everyone else is and everyone will remember who didn't. And I, I really, they, you know, this is one of the big supply chains. So it's kind of like, you know, there's a lot of leadership that's being shown because they realize like people are genuinely going through these challenges and they're trying to be fair on both sides. Yeah, you could take a little bit on each side, right, for yourself. But if you do that, you know, what's the long term is because eventually, assuming it clears up, we all hope it does, business goes back to normal. I think we're going to start to see a bit of a shakeout based on how human we were as humans or as brands or... Brands or other yeah. Brands. yeah. I think I think That's integrity will speak volumes, and I, I hope we're around uh, long <laughs> enough to, to keep. <laughs> <laughs> we will be because there's toilet paper back in the stores, and I'm so right. happy about that. Yep, that we had a full good. shelf today, top to bottom. All right, um, I guess kind of wrap. Well, you can't you can't uh, help uh, but but put it all you know. At the longer we're in this, I think we've all had a chance to step back and. Um, we've we've vacillated between sort of fear and and anger, resistance, um, and then you know we've built a a, a certain degree of understanding, um, and now we're sort of shifting into uh, what what can we learn from this, and and where uh, you know where can we get better? And um, I, I think there's gonna be some really great things that come out of this. Um, I know it's May, you know, we've got even thicker skin now, um, but I think it's gonna make us better humans um, and hopefully a better country, a better globe. So, segueing into, what are the key takeaways, lessons that you would impart upon the community here? What have you learned? What are you taking away? What is it that you've, that's making you stronger having gone through this time? I would say, you know, it's, it's really forced us to look at our business from a lot of different angles. We're finding, you know, invariably there's efficiencies to be found. Um, and I think we're doing a good job at figuring out where those are and what can we do either with less or what can we do without. Um, and I think as Rachel said, really, if we can conduct yourself 
in a kind way among business to business and people to people, we're going to get much further along. We've been talking about the fact that maybe this needs to go on a whole lot longer in order for us to see a significant shift in how we as a society uh, conducts itself and interacts with each other. Um, I hope that we can get to some place that's a little bit better than we were before. Um, and yeah, anything yeah. else? Yeah, relationships, the human element of it. Um, business is not getting um, easier. Mm. Um, there are more and more challenges now than ever before. And so I think, one, you gotta be really, really um, passionate, insane, to, uh, to, to do, you, you know, to do this, to be an entrepreneur, to be a business owner. Um, but it's also, um, I think it's a, a matter of um, being as prepared as you can. Um, and and this, this, thing, this thing really blindsided everyone. And so. How, how could your supply chain be a little bit better after this? Like what would you do a little bit differently um, from that side, be it cash management, inventory management, ordering, like what, what are a few things there you'd be focused on? Wow, um, that's, that's a really tough question because, well, I'll be, I'll be perfectly honest that the, um, it is probably, it's probably not to produce in, in a country that's halfway around the world. Um, so that for one, I think local for local models are really interesting um, to me personally. I would love to be able to produce in China using our renewable resources for China. And then I'd like to do the same model in the United States and pull locally, because I think you can be a lot more nimble um, when, when you're not so reliant on globalization. Um, so I think that, good question. The irony of it all, right? We're going from globalist to localist. So, all right. I'm pretty good. Brian, anything? Follow up? No, I mean, I'm just uh, really inspired. I, I really enjoyed hearing your stories and uh, the principles that you, uh, you're you sharing, the, that the stories that you shared. Like, I really appreciate that. That just it means a lot. And, uh, and thank you for doing that. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure as always. Um, I think there's a lot to take away here. We definitely blew by our 15 minutes pretty quickly. Um, but this has been another episode of Behind the Grind with Rich Brubaker. Brian and Tab, thank you so Brian much. And, Jeff, you and, so much. And, and Rachel and Jeff. Thank you guys. Hey guys. Um, again, uh, I will be following again, up with their full video below, but also if you have below, questions, if you have, if you have kind of some have experience of your own that you'd like to share, please do share uh, down below. If there's uh, comments below, or questions, I'll make sure Jeff and Rachel are, sure are responding back to you pretty quickly. So thank you, so, uh, thank you very much. Hope you're all safe. Uh, have a great week. And safe. see you next time. And